Side hair twirl. Good morning, Lisa I Bloom. Love my jingle. I love my jingle so much. Good morning. Happy Friday. It's such a, it's a little uh, it's just a little crooning love song for you. Good morning. Uh, listen, uh, so I, I, we have to talk about, uh, we were saying, you know, on the show, we've been talking about that there's got such a game of gotcha going on. I think we had talked about someone tried to uh, plan a false story with Rachel Maddow to take her down. I know they've been coming after our friend Joy Reid. Um, yes. my, it is my personal opinion. This was a hit job on Al Franken. Mm -hmm. Um but at any rate, I so I've heard that uh, they're trying to do this to you, um, and that O'Reilly likely is behind this because you are famously the person that took O'Reilly down. Um, but again, for such justified reasons, who pays millions and millions of dollars in sexual harassment suits? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, that is being unfairly targeted, as he says, right? Yeah. Well, if you know, you're nobody until the right wing hit job people come after you. I guess right. so. I guess I'm in pretty good company, and that's nice. Right. So Bill O'Reilly has put this story out there, and there's going to be a, a longer article tonight by this right-wing guy that right. that supposedly I was trying to pay off uh, Trump accusers. And, you know, that's ridiculous, and right. nothing could be further from the truth. What happened was is that I represented four Trump accusers back in 2016 in the run-up to the election. Two of them ultimately came out publicly, and two of them did not. And one of them who did not, we'll call her Jane Doe, she right. was the one who famously accused him, accused Trump of raping her when she was 13 years old. Right. She was very scared. Listen, I do this every day with all of my cases against high-profile men. I have many, and it's always the same. The women are absolutely terrified, and they have some good reason to be terrified because these guys can come after you just like you're coming after me. So, right. you know, everybody remembers that I called that press conference. She was ready to speak out. This was going to be her big day. We had about 100 reporters in my law firm, and ultimately she just was too terrified. We got death threats. We got rape threats. My law firm website was hacked. Our emails were hacked. Yep, I remember. She just couldn't do it. She was too terrified, and we got her out of there, and she told me to dismiss her case. She previously filed, and we dismissed it. <clears throat> and, you know, it was heartbreaking, and I think a lot of people's hearts were broken that day. And so donors reached out to my law firm at that point. It was a couple of days before the election, and they said, is there anything we can do to help, like provide her with the relocation or around-the-clock security or, you know, what can we do here? And I, I want to be clear, it was not Hillary Clinton or anybody from the Clinton campaign. Right. These were other donors, okay? Right. And uh, I had another Trump accuser, we'll call her accuser number four, uh, who was in a similar situation. She had already come to me. We had vetted her story elaborately, background check, social media check, talk to her friends, talk to her family, get photos from the time, documents. We'd gone through for weeks and weeks this elaborate story, you know, and her story right. checked out. I still Right. It. We've talked about that you guys have a very uh, elaborate vetting process at Bloom Firm that, you know, oh. of the people that come to you, you'd actually take very few of the cases, right? Yes, and frankly, a lot of people don't like our vetting process, and they get mad at us, and they feel that we're being very intrusive. But you know, especially if you're going up against somebody like Trump, we got you know we got to double check everything, and we do. Right. So this woman, number four, we had gone through the process. Uh, she was credible. I believed her, and I said, "Listen, you know, at this, you're terrified." She'd gone back and forth. I'm going to come out. I'm not. I am. I'm not. I am. I'm not. Which I understand, and. Now I said, look, people are, are offering to provide for your security, for your relocation. Uh, you know, right. it's, it's now or never. Do you want to do it? And she demanded millions of dollars ultimately. And I said, well, you know, that's, that's a non-starter. That, that's not going to happen. Right. And ultimately, there wasn't enough. She didn't feel comfortable. Right. I even went out to her in a, a rural area across the country. Right, the days before the election, I said, you know, this is this is it. This is your moment. I mean, you came to me to do this, right? And and now you don't want to do it. I understand that, but you know, so many of my clients are in fear, and we're able to get them through the fear, and we're able to get them to speak out. And you know, if somebody wants to offer something to help you, I, I, I take it. You right, know? right. A lot of us are too proud well, to take it, but we need right. help. Right. But so ultimately what happened is she was recording your calls, right, um, and, and peddled it to this far-right journalist who has been called the easiest mark in the business for GOP uh, oppo research hits. Um, the guy you go to. He peddles false stories to Fox News. That's who this guy is, right? Right. That's what happens. So, you know, there was this great um, piece about Sean Hannity in the New York Times recently about how he 
gen- generates outrage, you know, when there really is nothing to be outraged about. Right. He, you know, so that's what's going on. There's going to be this big article tonight, but Bill O'Reilly's already been talking about it. That, right. Oh, we have tapes. So this woman who I thought was a distraught Trump accuser, right. who I spent hours and hours for free, you know, pro bono, talking to her, helping her. <clears throat> Apparently she was recording me the whole time, right. which is illegal, because in California, you can't record people in California, I'm right. in California, and <clears throat> it's illegal, it's a crime, but, you know, I'm not going to go after her. I, frankly, you know, Stephanie, I still believe her, because right. her story checked out. I think she's really been a pawn in all of this. Yeah. Um, well, but, I mean, that's the other agree. Uh, uh, that's the other egregious part of this is you know we know for you know that that people like Roger Stone and Sean Hannity they they have I, I believe used people as pawns to try to you know put, do these political hits. I mean, this is what they did to Rachel Maddow tr- because I think the people that are the most uh, fierce Trump, you know, uh, I mean, obviously she's at the epicenter of Trump Russia. I think uh, Al Franken yes. was at the center of Trump. Right, he's the one that got Sessions yeah. to recuse. And so I don't think it's yeah. an accident. You know, you're the one that took well, Town Bill O'Reilly. You're the one that had a lot of Trump accusers, which this is all resurfacing now, right? Yeah, but yes, I, I I think so. And you know, I mean, I'd like to say that to some extent I'm an equal opportunity, you know, lawyer for harassment. I, I represent a woman against John Conyers, right? And, you know, she had a very credible story as well that checked out. We had four eyewitnesses who signed affidavits. We just came back from Washington where now that he's gone, uh, Marion Brown and I are lobbying for reform to sexual harassment laws because that's really what it's all about for us. So, I mean, of course, Trump is obviously a misogynist and uh, yeah. was trying to, uh, you know, help women tell their stories. It's a huge, huge right. job. As I say, two of my clients did come out. They were very, very brave. Well, and these, and I don't know what the other, uh, are we up to 20 women, Lisa, in terms of Donald Trump accused? But again, as you say, these two, this was more than harassment. This was rape, rape, right? Well, one of them, yeah, the one that, the the one that ultimately canceled the press conference, yes. Yeah. And, you know, the one, number four, I mean, she had a very credible story that, you know, Trump had groped her at a beauty pageant years earlier, which was very similar to what a lot of other beauty pageant contestants said. She had a photo of herself with him at the pageant, yeah. so she clearly was there, and she had uh, somebody who she had told contemporaneously. And, right. You know, it, I mean, it, it all checked out. I, I still believe her. You know, these yeah. things are complicated. People can be victims in multiple ways. But. Yeah, well, we've seen that, that, you know, sexual harassment is not a partisan thing. It's not, you know, they're, they're so you're right. There are certainly um, uh, shades of, uh, of everybody, but I have to say, doesn't it help you as a lawyer that Trump is such an idiot and he won't shut up? Like, he went on record, right, as saying, I don't know any of these women. I've never met any of them. And it's like, well, you're like, you know, one of them was on The Apprentice. You have photographs of the other one yeah. with you. Like, no, I mean, you know, sure. I mean, here's the, here's the reality. I'm tough. I'm a lawyer. I'm going to keep chugging away. I'm not going to slow down. But this is an attempt to discredit the women. This is an attempt. This is why women don't want to come forward, because they don't want to be attacked. They don't want to have their lawyers be attacked. You know, this is going to be a smear, I predict, on all of the Trump accusers, that they were all just in it for the money. Somehow there was money sloshing around. But, you know, Trump can have his billions and he can pay his lawyers whatever he wants. Nobody questions any of that. But if some kind donors offer to help scared women get right. location and security, and I relay that offer, which, by the way, this woman ultimately did not take. Right. Um, but you know, well, that must have—I mean, that must have set—that must have set your alarms off when then she started asking for millions because obviously the offers were for assistance for much security or relocation, much right? Less. Right. Yeah. Much, much less. Right. Uh, you know, it did, but but a lot of things set my alarms off. You know, I mean, people are very, very scared, and they yeah. don't know what to do. And they, you know, uh, accusers in sexual assault cases—they often change their mind. Yes, I want to come forward. No, I don't. We're all set. And then the next day, they're supposed to do an interview, and they back out. I mean, this is very, very common. I don't want any money. Well, yes, actually, it would help if I could relocate. I live in Trump country. Everybody's going to yeah. hate me if I come out publicly. Okay, yeah. well, that makes sense. Yeah. So, well, uh, yeah, Jill Harth, who was the uh, first Trump accuser, who we remember, your, your client, 
Um, she said, having to retell my experiences of Donald Trump's harassment is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I consider myself lucky to have had Lisa Bloom by my side after my old lawsuit resurfaced. Um, she went on and on to sing your praises, but she said, I'm terribly disappointed that anyone would suggest Lisa was trying to pay women to come up with stories. It's simply not true. Lisa Pro Bono was trying to help against a powerful billionaire who was elected, even though 19 of us ultimately came out and accused him of sexual misconduct. These continued attacks on accusers and our lawyers is what makes it so hard for women to speak out even now. Um, that's yeah. a good point. That's yeah, it's Jill, and she's really been through it. You know, this is a woman who lost her job as a result of coming and speaking out against Trump. Uh, she's had a very difficult time. She's really struggled, and you know, she stayed strong. Right. And that's what it's like behind the scenes with these accusers. So, you know, again, O'Reilly, give it your best shot. I'm currently in litigation against him. I represent a man who he sued for five million dollars because the man right. did a Facebook post in support of the women. I represented the three women who came out publicly that led to his termination. So, you know, Bill O'Reilly doesn't like me, and I guess he's unemployed and he's got some time on his hands. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, bring it on, Bill. Yeah, he's I love. I particularly love when people again. sitting in uh, Bill O'Reilly's chair uh, on Roger Ailes' network have something to say about uh, sexual harassment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, they're experts on it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I guess they should be. Um, all right, honey. Listen. Uh, hang in there. I know you've been through. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we've all. I mean, it is interesting. It's just it's getting so um, just heated out there in this you know constant game of gotcha. Like, but you know, and that's the thing. People like O'Reilly. Like, oh, you got one of your or yours. We're gonna get one of yours. Uh, well, Bill O'Reilly is sixteen kinds of guilty. <laughs> there is, right. you know. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, how many millions? I think it sounds that high that, that he, yeah. you know, he as a result of sexual harassment allegations. It was but, so bad, Fox fired him. Like, Fox <laughs> obviously knew that this was... Right. <laughs> right. So that's yeah. Right. So, yeah. All right. All right, honey. Okay. Love you. Hang in there. Love you, too. Thank All right. Thank happy, you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye. All right, there she goes, Lisa Bloom. <laughs> what? She's a hero for us. Yeah. Right she is. She's a warrior. She's a warrior.